So splinter offers, what we just talked about in one of the previous videos, are great because they keep you from looking like this. And tripwire offers, uh, in general, keep you from being that creepy person who proposes marriage on a first date. But remember, you know, there's a number of reasons, there's two big reasons that your customers are going to doubt. The first reason is a doubt in you or your brand, right? And tripwire offers can definitely help with that because we're not coming on so strong. Right, we're not, we're not, hey, how's it going? Uh, right, we're, we're, we're going kind of seamlessly and subtly. But even if you do that right, right, even if you have an ideal tripwire offer, even if you don't do this, even if you overcome the prospect's doubt in you or your brand, you still haven't overcome the biggest hurdle of all, which is self doubt. Your prospect's doubt in themselves. Your prospect's belief that this ideal after you know, that, that you came up with before in the statement of value, this whole concept of achieving this, this great desired end result, even if they want it, they're sitting down here looking up and thinking, I, I can't do that. There's no way. There's no way that I can do that. And that's why the best tripwires, uh, certainly if you're in a market that is jaded, that, that is kind of hurting, the best tripwires also offer some type of a little victory. Okay. They offer some type of a little victory, something that moves them down that continuum of belief, something that makes somebody say, okay, yeah, I can do this. Um, some quick examples of this, if this applies to your market, if it doesn't, if you're in a market where your people are happy and they believe everything, then you can maybe skip um, this lesson. I don't recommend it though, because still deploying little victories, even in markets that are uh, very excited and, and, and very happy and not even remotely cynical or jaded, uh, still deploying these little victories is going to make you uh, a lot more successful and increase your conversion rates as you move down the funnel. So one of my favorite examples of a little victory is a back pain clinic here in Texas where I live. Now, if you know anybody who suffered from back pain or if you suffer from back pain, uh, you know it can be incredibly debilitating and also nothing works. I mean, seemingly nothing works. There are people who suffer from back pain for decades and decades and they, they try everything. They, they try pills and they try massage and they try, um, you know, chiropractors and they poke needles in their back and, you know, all manner of things that they try and nothing really works. So when you go to somebody uh, who has been suffering from back pain for decades and believe they've tried everything and you say, hey, I've got a back pain clinic, we'll fix your back pain, then there's a good chance even if you do everything right, that they're going to be like, I just don't believe it. I don't, I don't believe that I can be pain free. That's their fear. They don't believe that they can be pain free. Well, here's what this back pain clinic um, in, in Texas does. When you call in, they don't talk about how great their procedure is. They don't talk about their unique selling proposition, what makes them different, what makes them better, blah, 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 blah. Everyone else does that. Instead, what they offer over the phone is a little victory. So when they have somebody on the phone, they say, um, okay, so you currently suffer from back pain, correct? Yes, I do. Okay, our procedure uh, is very effective and it is unique, but it doesn't work for all types of back pain. So what I need you to do is I need you to go through a simple little exercise for me. And they have them stand up and they have them cross one leg over another and they have them reach around. They have them do just a little stretch and they have them hold it and they'll hold it there, hold, 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 hold. And then they'll have the person stand up sh straight again and they'll ask them a simple question. How do you feel? Now, the person could say one of two things, like, ow, I, I still really hurt. If they do that, they can say, well, you know, I'm, I'm really sorry about that. It seems like our procedure probably isn't going to be a good fit for you. But if the person says, and more times than not they do, wow, you know what, I actually feel better, then they get to say, okay, I have good news and I have bad news. The good news is, is our type of procedure does work for you. You have this type of sciatica, and when I had you do that stretch, it momentarily relieved the tension. That's why you don't have the pain. So what the procedure does is it makes you feel the way that you feel right now, forever because we relieve the pressure without you having to do the stretch. Now, the only bad side is, is the stretch I had you do, it's very temporary. In fact, right by now, the pain may already be coming back. And in more times than not, it is. So what they're able to do is they're able to qualify a prospect, but they're also able to move them down the continuum of belief. They're able to make them believe not just in the brand, not just in this back pain clinic, but they believe in themselves because they felt it. They felt what pain-free feels like. If only for a moment, they felt what it feels like. And that's what this back pain clinic offers. That's what that little tripwire thing, and it is a tripwire. They're asking them for some of their time. Stand up, have an appointment, right? That's what they're having them do. Really, really, really smart. Really great example of a little victory. Um, 
uh, we also are partners in a company that's in the uh, fitness space. Now, fitness is one of those areas where lots of people, they've been struggling with their weight for ever and ever and ever, and you tell them, hey, we've got a way that you can lose weight, Pff, give me a break. Even if they love you, even if they think that your stuff is great, they'll say, look, I believe it worked for you, I believe it worked for all your before and afters, it just, I don't believe it's gonna work for me, because nothing else has. So here's what they do. Everybody who comes into this program, they have them do a seven-day juice fast. A seven-day juice fast, right? And what they tell everybody is, they say, look, I want you to do this seven-day juice fast because what the juice fast is going to do is, one, it's going to push out a lot of toxins, a lot of junk. It's going to really be prepping your body, resetting it, um, so that when we start the actual program, it'll be more receptive to it. It's also going to reset your taste buds so you no longer have a lot of the same cravings. Now, all that's true, but the other thing that this tripwire does is it delivers a little victory because in those seven days, even though it's just seven days, two things happen. Number one, the people going through this program, they do feel thinner. They absolutely feel thinner, and it's because a lot of water weight's been pushed out, a lot of gunk that's in your intestines, everything's been pushed out. I mean, you don't really, if you don't eat much, uh, but like drink some juice and eat some salad for seven days, you're gonna lose some weight, right? So they feel thinner, they look thinner, their clothes don't fit like they, like they once did in a good way. People might even notice like, wow, you know, you look really good because their face will thin out and things like that, right? So they'll feel thinner. That causes them to believe. But the other thing that they tell them at the end of the seven days is they say, look, I want you to understand this. Uh, actually, before the program, they say, the hardest part of this program is the first seven days. After that, everything else gets easier. So if you can give me seven days by the time we're done, you'll know that the worst part is over. So the person doesn't just believe that they can be thinner because they feel it. They believe that they can complete the program because they just did the hardest part. Again, it's a little victory, little victory. These are very specific examples, but think, how could you be incorporating them into your company, into your brand? There's also a kitchen remodeler, a kitchen remodeler um, here in our area. Uh, now, what every other kitchen remodeler does, they say, hey, you want to remodel your kitchen? Great. We'll send somebody out uh, and give you a quote, right? No real value in advance. You know, we come into, we send some smelly dude with a clipboard into your home. Um, he measures a bunch of stuff and, you know, we take up a lot of your time and then we send you a spreadsheet with a price at the bottom. You're welcome right? Not a particularly great offer. And that's why most kitchen remodelers, they're like, I need leads, I need leads, I need leads, ah, leads. How can I get more leads? We get more leads by having a better offer. And so what this particular kitchen remodeler did is they got out of doing the quotes. They said, look, here's what we do. All right. For 200 bucks, we're going to send a professional designer to your home, right? You pay us $200. We will send a professional designer to your home and they will design a new kitchen for you. They will select the, uh, they, they will make uh, selections and recommendations of countertops, of tile, backsplash, cabinetry, anything you want to do. They'll do a full 3D rendering. And so you will have it. You will get to see how beautiful your kitchen can be for 200 bucks. And then what we'll do is we'll list out all of the things that you need to do this job. Now, these plans are yours. You've paid it for us. We would hope that if you like what you see, that you would give us an opportunity to quote the job, but you can have others quote it as well. It's true value in advance, no strings attached. Now what happens is of the people that pay the 200 bucks to have the new kitchen design done, 60% of them have this company remodel their kitchen. And the 40% that they don't get, it usually isn't because they lost them to a competitor. It's usually because the person just wasn't ready to move forward yet, but they might be. Right? They might be sometime down the road, but it's because they gave value in advance. Yeah, there's a risk that somebody could take the plans and quote them out to somebody else, or you know, that, that certainly could happen. But there's also a risk that if you take somebody out for coffee, even if it goes great, that the next night they go out to dinner with someone else. That's always a risk in human relationships. But we know we get the best out of people when we trust and when we give value first. And the same is true for business. The same is true for what we're doing here. And that's why conversion funnels executed like we're talking about here work. All right, one more example. And we do this in the association business. We run a number of associations. Now, if you tell somebody, hey, do you want to be a member of this association? They'll usually be like, nah, I don't, you know, I don't need that association. No, thanks. I'm, I don't, you know, I've, I've got friends. I've got this. I've got that. I don't need to be a member of an association. Uh, but when you say, hey, we've got this great 
you know, duffel bag or this really cool knife. Do you want the knife? Yeah, I'll take the knife. Okay, great. You know, now that you have this knife, I wanted to tell you that this knife is actually a gift from the Family Protection Association. And what I'd love to do now is I'd love to give you even more great stuff and discount on even more knives when you become a member, right? Now they get to associate, which is something that they want to do anyway, but they don't necessarily want to admit. And we give them a good reason to do something that we, that they would want to do anyway. That's a type of a little victory, okay? So think, again, this doesn't apply to every single market, but think, how can I apply a little victory to my offer? How can I move my prospects down that continuum of belief? How can I make them feel so good about themselves, so abundant, so prosperous, that they, that they want to, to keep moving forward, that they want to continue investing with my company? How, how can we do that? If you can figure this one out, then uh, you're going to be in pretty good shape. And I promise you, you'll figure something out that your competitors almost certainly will not. So give that some thought and I'll see you in the next video.